Welcome to the, the Leeds LGBT Plus um, Literature Festival 2021. My name is James Nash. I'm a poet, a writer, and often find myself these days as a literary host. And it's my complete pleasure to introduce um, this very special event where um, we meet the LGBT poet laureate and activist Trudy Housen, whose work with Amnesty, Stonewall, and many LGBTQ plus organizations has helped spread the word. She's also um, was the first reader of an LGBT plus poem on national TV in 2017. How are you, Trudy? I'm well, and I'm so pleased to be here. Hello, everyone. Thank you for inviting me. And yes, happy to be here. Brilliant. Now, there's been a kind of physical, as geographical journey in your life, as well as this move from one kind of career to another. Um, can you tell us a little bit about those physical and geographical moves and then the move of career or focus? Mm, well, they're all sort of linked, really. I was brought up in a working class northern very small mill town. Uh, and I was fortunate enough to get a bursary. I was, I was writing poetry then actually, uh, mm. but I was lucky enough to get a bursary, full bursary to study in London. And uh, I'd never met uh, either a gay person or a lesbian or a middle-class person until I came to London, uh, but I knew I'd meet someone I got down here. And, uh, and I came down here and just completely transformed my life. I mean, I was able to meet gay people from all, all walks of life, every kind of job, every kind of nationality, every, I mean, my life just completely opened out and I started continuing writing poetry. I, I trained to sing and act and that technique sort of supported me through my work. I mean, basically it's all, what I do is all about the same thing. It's all about, communicating and reaching out to to people with what what I'm writing about which is sort of us really. <laughs> well, I mean, my next question is and you sort of mentioned it um, have you always written now were, were, there, were, there, were you writing as a teenager were you writing mm. angst ridden poetry as a teenager? Yes so I was writing poetry and I was writing um, I was singing as well so I was writing sort of little uh, poet, poems to go to music. So yes, poetry is always something I, poetry is always something I've loved. And, and I think it's so, it's a cordial really, isn't it? It's a very compressed sort of, you can express your deepest feelings or your fears or your most excited or happiest moments. And then if you share it, other people might, be feeling the same or have had the same experience as you or be feeling all those feelings or just be feeling completely confused you know so poet has always been a really good friend and confidant to me and it's just interesting how I came to realize that actually through this particular post I have now how poetry can be used as a catalyst for social and political change mm. and that's a sort of different a dimension of the many, many uses of poetry. You, you were appointed the LGBT Poet Laureate in 2016. How did this come about? Was it a, as a result of you powering along and being involved, writing and sharing your writing? How did it happen? Who organized it? Oh, okay, well, actually what happened was that my, I was already writing poetry and in 2000, and, gosh, was it 12? Um, I wrote a poem for the London Olympics and that raised my poetry profile massively. And it also made me really think about, I, I, actually I used to be an actress, but I stopped being an actress uh, because when I joined the, when I became aware of uh, women's emancipation and the liberation movement, it made me realize that I couldn't possibly continue to work as, as a commercial actress because of the way women was treated at that point. So I found myself in a situation where I was also a high profile poet and getting a lot of media attention and actually wasn't very comfortable uh, by, by what I was representing. 
So I made the decision that I was going to, um, I mean, I was making quite a lot of money, that I could use that money to actually focus on what I was really interested in, which was LGBTQ politics and our community. And I started uh, in London at that time, there was hardly really nothing going on for LGBTQ poetry. So I started running a, um, an evening in a West End club for uh, the Phoenix Artist Club for um, LGBT poets. It was sort of, I had two guests and then open mic. And I did that for five years and was doing lots of guesting and really pushing it out there, you know, that our voice needed to be heard. And at the time I was volunteering for Camden, um, Camden Forum, LGBT Forum. And so it was them that uh, actually appointed, appointed me in 2016. And I remember at the time I was like, oh, well, what does that mean? And they said, oh no, it'll be just the same as what you're doing, won't be any more work. I mean, little did I know it was going to, I mean, it has completely taken over my whole life. And, you know, it's a huge privilege because it gives me fantastic access to the people who make the laws and rules that actually might be causing our community hardship. So, you know, it is a huge responsibility also, because obviously I want to do the best sure. for everyone. And at the end of the day, I am a servant of that community. community. By that, I mean our fabulous community. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now, um, you mentioned, um, um, in some of your kind of the, the video clips we're going to see, you mentioned some of your heroes, your heroines, the writers and activists who've gone before. Um, who are the um, writers and LGBT folk from the past who influence or have influenced you? Who, what are the who are the names? I mean, I would come up with people like James Baldwin, obviously, but you will have others who. Well, obviously, Sappho. I mean, she's a very famous yes. uh, poet, but also writers, witty, funny writers like Oscar Wilde. I mean, how brilliant. Mm. The rise and fall of the mighty and, you know, very sad, sad tale, really. But actually lots of our Audrey Lords, fantastic warrior and, and poet. Uh, just many people who are living and dead, but I wrote that poem, a day, uh, One Day in Heaven, for LGBT History Month, uh, because I have great concerns about our history vanishing. And I wanted to write a poem that would stimulate people to, um, you know, to actually be curious about our history. Uh, I mean, we can all find our own personal heroes. It's just, I find it fascinating. And I wanted to uh, engage other people with it too. So that's why I wrote that poem. Brilliant. That, that we are actually going to see um, the clip of that now. If I had one day in heaven, the people I'd like to see are those I'd like to remember, the heroes of LGBT. I'd like to speak with Harvey Milk, tell him he's great and fine, cause he stood up for all our rights, yours, ours and mine. I'd fall in love with Marlena Dietrich, always wanted to. What am I to do? I can't help it. I'd be daring and foppish with Oscar Wilde, amused by his dazzling wit, discuss poetry, plays and life with him and ask, was Bosie worth it? I'd enjoy being Sappho's muse, perusing those Grecian views, serenaded by the sweetest sounds in a place where lesbians abound. I'd like to walk with Gertrude Stein and talk about cow 
cow, cow, stroke her poodle, known as basket, and let her show me how, how, how. I'd walk in Derek Jarman's garden, discussing film, art, flowers. Let our imagination bloom as we while away the hours. So you see, today's the day to honour our ghosts of the past. Let's not forget what they mean to us. Let our one day in heaven last. Moving on a little bit, um, I'm often asked um, by um, non-LGBT people why we still have gay pride and other demonstrations um, when, in the words of some people, we have got what we want. What's your response to this? I think they mean gay marriage and, and de decriminalization. What's your response to this? I think pride is very important in the same way that I think International Women's Day is very important. You know, I mean, some people say, why well, have Women's Day, you know? Um, I think it's important because we need to actually recognize that we, are, we do still have a long way to go. People are still being killed. Yeah. because they're gay, beheaded and thrown off buildings. People are still being ostracized. It's still not taught in schools. Children are still absolutely confused about what gender is. And, you know, not everyone wants, chooses to fit into that sort of, quote, heteronormative, unquote. Um, it's important that we express I mean, our community, we're lucky because we have that vast diversity. And as, quote, outsiders, you know, I think we need to really try and broaden people's consciousness so that they under, understand this more and accept us. So, you know, that's why I think pride is important, but pride shouldn't be just about status and money. Pride has to be about grassroots communities and about that sense of developing a sense of self-respect so that people don't feel terrified or isolated or worried because they might be, you know, non-binary, trans or bisexual or homosexual. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I was also interested to see that you had took part in a demo. I like, I loved writing the word demo down. It, it took me back to the 60s. You took part in a demonstration outside the Russian embassy not so long ago, and you read a poem. What were you, and you were carrying a yellow rose or a cream rose. I thought that was very affecting. What were you hoping to gain from that? Well, um, I was approached um, by uh, actually two Stonewall and the Peter Tatchell Foundation, and they wanted to actually uh, address Parliament and have a cross party debate about what was happening in Chechnya. And the thing about a poem is it's just one sheet of paper. And in that one sheet of paper, you can sum up the whole, the whole idea and concept and what you want in a very accessible way that reaches not only to you intellectually, but also, yes, into your heart, really. It transcends that intellectual consciousness. So poetry um, can be used in that way. So I was approached and uh, some of my mates came along, which was Peter Tatchell and Ian McKellen and Mike Cashman. And uh, we stood, at, it was a publicity stunt. Uh, we stood outside the Russian embassy and I recited the poem. And then Peter and um, Michael decided they, we were given a bunch of uh, rainbow roses. Uh, so uh, Peter and uh, we were all holding the roses and Peter and, um, uh, sorry, Ian and Michael decided they were going to do a gay snog. I mean, you know, they're friends, obviously. And I just thought, we've got to have women kissing here. And the only, only girl, woman I knew was my uh, new assistant. So I said, look, I'm awfully sorry, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to kiss you. And she was quite shocked. So, you know, I felt it was important to the press that it wasn't just men kissing. You know, my, my view is that 
we are a team, all our genders, the, all the polarizations and the bits in the middle, and we need to work together. We can't be having sort of one bit going off, shooting off and being critical. We've got to be equal and respecting each other. So that was you know, my take on it. So it was used, uh, the poem was used in parliament and actually it was on the news. Um, yeah. The prime minister was saying about the, you know, the terrible conditions that the LGBT community was suffering in Chechnya. And I thought, my God, it works. Well, I mean, you've just answered my next question, which was, um, can poetry change things? And I think the very fact that your poem made it into the national press, made it into parliament, got people talking means that it has poet poetry, can have a very special power to connect. Brilliant. That sounds brilliant. I did so much like the clip, which we're going to see now. I'm proud to be associated in this protest. Uh, this is a poem I wrote that's been used by Amnesty and Stonewall about the events unfolding in Chechnya. And I'd just like to mention also, it's not just gay men or bi men, it's also lesbians, bi women, trans women out there who are being tortured or forced to be invisible to save their lives. This is my poem, Chechnya's Choice. Law-abiding, responsible men and women, people from our LGBT community, beaten, caged, raped and tortured in a hurricane of homophobic hate. Chechnya has abdicated rationality, relinquished reason and justice, succumbed to brutality and hatred. The cull has begun. Fathers, brothers, uncles snatched from the bosom of their families, mothers, sisters' hands wrenched from rocking Russia's cradle. Chechnya has made its choice to punish homosexual love, to purge its streets of dignity and respect, disregarding even pity's gaze. Let us now raise our voices, lift up our global community's heart. Ours is the enduring voice of love. It cannot, must not be silenced. <laughs> now, moving on, you've spoken up against hate crimes. Um, any LGBT plus person will have been subject to some kind of homophobia or, or or, or, or whatever, the, of the gentlest sort all the way through to, to violence. Um, does your own experience inform what you write? Yes, well, also as a, as a woman, uh, women are used to, we suffer from harassment often for all, all our lives and we're very much taught to be very aware and wary. But have I suffered from harassment? You see, well, look at me. I mean, I look like a sort of conventional, straight, happy, smiley, friendly person. So I can pass. Yes. And in some ways that made me feel that it was so important that people like me who can quote pass actually stood up and just really celebrated all our community and all its diversity and fabulousness and just let people know just how what well, just how great we are how stylish and fun and yeah and authentic that's brilliant i mean um do you feel um over the last 20 years um that um things have got better in the uk for lgbtq people I think things have got better in the UK. Uh, I mean, more so in the big cities, uh, you know, but I think now there's more coverage, you know, the, <laughs> I think advertisers have realized the pink pound is, is happening. And I think that there's more, uh, more gay people on, and trans people on TV and on commercials. And I think it's more accepted, but there's still, hate crime and loneliness and isolation 
And I think it's so, particularly during COVID, I mean, our community, <laughs> a lot of us have very unconventional relationships. So we don't have that partner that lives with us or don't have perhaps just one partner. And during COVID, you know, we were sort of completely excluded, weren't allowed to see any of those people that we love. Mm. So yes, I think we still have quite a way to go. Sure. And changes you'd really like to see in the next 20 years? Oh, in education. Education is the key. Mm. Uh, we need to have it to be all right for children to have two mummies or two daddies or two non-binary people and for children to feel that they're non-binary or feeling uncomfortable in their body and not and be able to talk about it i mean we need to encourage uh well understanding tolerance and acceptance of people who are different and you know by that i mean uh, people who are look different also not just our community I think education is the way the way forward because some older people are they're still frightened and they're frightened because they're ignorant. You know, if we can if we can support and encourage the children, then they can help to educate their parents and grandparents. I, I'm interested in this because I was a teacher and I did teach sex education during the clause 28 times. Ah. Um, and, you know, we found ways of circumventing that, but I was very startled, I still work in schools, going into a school not so long back, to see signs on the corridor walls saying, I'm gay, get over it. And it felt like a little seed of hope there, that mm. actually being, as actually part of the fabric of the, of, of the school, but I completely agree, education is the next big thing. Yes. Um, we're now going to um, have um, a clip, um, Hatred Hurts Us All. I'd like to dedicate this poem to all the children who were lost to us because of hate crime. In this week across our nation, we stand united in this call. There is no place for hatred because hatred hurts us all. Whatever your sexuality or religion, ability, gender, color of skin, this battle against hate crime is one we have to win. Let's educate the ignorant dispel prejudice and fear, promote that love is a human right, be open and be clear. We can make a difference by what we do and say. Against the intolerance and injustice, some people suffer every day. It's okay to be different. Let's honor who we are make our world a safer place for all of us, near and far. As I mentioned um, in my introduction to you, Trudy, you read the first LGBT plus poem on national TV. Did this feel, you mentioned the responsibility of your role before, did this feel like a huge responsibility? Did it feel scary? Mm. Well, I'd already been doing quite a lot of poetry on, uh, because of the Olympic poem on sort of, uh, you know, various media channels and I'd made lots of contacts. I mean, this is probably another reason why I was appointed LGBT Poet Laureate because I'd been working as an actress for years. Yeah. So I just started writing to some of the uh, people that I'd worked with and said, look, I've got this post and this is the kind of stuff I'm writing and what are you up to? And fancy meeting for coffee. And, and that's how I got it basically with, with people that I worked with before. But yes, uh, Actually, on the day I was, um, I was, I'd been offered hats by an, an haute couture hatter called Stephen Jones, and his hats were just exquisite but very expensive. And I, 
And I remember that one of my main concerns was that something might happen to the hat. Uh, because I'm very fortunate, you know, I went to drama school and so I'm trained in lots of techniques. So, I mean, put me in front of my Apple Mac and I get completely anxious and worried about how to use it. But in terms of actually performing, um, I'm a natural performer and I feel very comfortable. So I didn't have, I didn't have too much. I was, oh, you hear that mad coughing? That is my dog. She's not dying, don't worry. So I wasn't too, I didn't sort of think about the responsibility of it, because if you think about that kind of stuff, it just becomes rather overwhelming. Yes, yes, I yes. Mean, you know, for me, I just, uh, you know, I do the warm ups, get ready, and I'm just dying to do it. So, you know. What was the response? Was it a mainly positive response? Was there any? Oh, very positive. And it also, uh, it also made people very aware of the post. No, people thought it was great, you know, because actually lots of people would have seen that, that we do hear sort of poetry on, you know, on the TV or, but during that time there weren't, there wasn't anything really about gay people. So I'm sure a lot of gay people uh, heard that poem and thought, wow, you know, that's me. I'm, an, I'm a gay nurse that lives next door or, you know, I, I'm, I'm a gay auntie. So I think it, uh, yeah, I think it, it worked in the sense that it made people really see that, you know, we're all together on this. We are a community, but actually we all bleed the same color blood. Yes. So we're part of society at large and as such are valuable within yeah. society as large as well as our own community. We're part of our own community, but we're part of families and friendship networks yes. everywhere, don't they? Yes. I'm your brother and sister. I'm both Mrs. and Mr. I'm gay, bi, trans, non-binary. I am myself. I'm your father and mother uncle, auntie, friend, and lover. I'm different and the same. I am your family. I'm black, white, pink, every hue. Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, Jew, skinhead, goth, punk, new romantic. I am me, I am you. I'm your nurse, your teacher, someone in your street. I am your family. I'm no better or worse, no richer, poorer, blessed or cursed, just part of the same gravitational wave as you. Now, your role um, is obviously very fascinating and takes up huge amounts of energy and time, which I'm sure there are paybacks in terms of the energy it gives you and the kind of feeling of being involved and, and involved in, in, in big, like big changing things. So what are the ways forward, do you think, for the role? Where do you envisage taking it in the next year or so? Well, I'd like to hand the role over to some, someone else, I would say a younger, younger person. Now the post is established, uh, but I have to say that this, when I got this post, it was completely unfunded. It, it is, remains a voluntary post. Right. And fortunately, because I did have contacts and have built up the post, now I'm able to uh, make a, a living out of doing, doing that role. Uh, so what I'd like to do really is to hand that role over to someone else. Now there's a, a bit of money involved because <laughs> bottom line we've got to pay our rent you know you've got you've got to pay our bills so i've become uh, i'm i was appointed co-chair of westminster forum so i'm hoping uh, in maybe a year or two that that will be a forum that will be able to actually support the post and and also now it, it will be easier because now other big commissions come in um, you know, from other organizations which are paid, uh, paid, paid work. But, you know, the thing about this role, it's a vocation. I mean, now I do uh, commission work and I get paid for it, but I also do write poems for organizations that have got absolutely no money. 
the smallest groups and they are the people who really need my support so you know I do spend a lot of time doing work for no money so it is a definitely vocational post. Well you imagine, you know, when things get a little bit easier, going on a kind of poet laureate tour of the country? I mean, in a way, by appearing at the Leeds Festival, <laughs> you're part of a tour, you're doing, you're reaching another group of people. But could you imagine, um, you know, doing small theatres up and down the country or small bars up and down the country? Yeah, yes, I do. Yes, definitely. And, and also not just... Uh, not not just the UK, it's a global post. You know, before COVID, I was invited to go to South Africa. Wow. Uh, and that would have been really groundbreaking. So, you know, there are big, you know, big offers coming, coming in. And of course, all the different, the global prides who I write, often write poems for, and, you know, haven't been able to go over there, but next, next year, I mean, I love traveling, going round and, and actually, I, I miss, I really miss it, you know, actually seeing people and because in a way I write the poetry, do the research on my own. So that whole thing about reaching out and to an, your audience. There's nothing better. Than but it's all about the audience then, it's not about you, you know. <laughs> it's about the audience is key. So yeah. like doing this Zoom thing, I've had to really try and a different, it's a different technique. It's a technique about really extending myself out so that I'm really reaching out to you out there who are watching watching this and you know yeah sending love and support really. I love the fact that you are getting so many commissions but it also sounds as if you're inspired to write a lot of the time. Things oh, start you get all the time. Is that is that what how it works for you? Well, let's face it, our community is an absolute treasure trove. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we are, we're hilarious and dramatic and inter we're interesting people. We've had interesting lives. So, you know, I'm very inspired by nature. I get a lot of energy from, you know, sort of nature and yeah, I, I don't find it difficult. I don't find it difficult to have ideas. And I love doing the research. It's about the only thing that I love the internet for, uh, but I just hate doing the admin. So, you know, that's my <laughs> weakness. But the poetry, I don't get writer's block or any of that, that stuff, no. <laughs> so what are you writing at the moment? Is there a particular commission you're involved in at the moment? Oh, well, I'm not sure I can talk about that, what I'm do, doing at the moment because it's obviously belongs to, to them and they will release it when it's finished. But uh, I recently did um, a three poem commission for the Royal Shakespeare Trust in Stratford-on-Avon. And that was three poems based on the whole of Shakespeare's plays and sonnets. Gosh. Which was huge. I mean, fortunately as an actress, I didn't know his yeah. plays, but it was three months, and one one uh, was about uh, concerning a woman's perspective, and I wrote a poem about Anne Hathaway in the first person, and another poem was about uh, the environment. So I wrote a sonnet, oh, which was an absolute killer. I thought, oh, I'll write a sonnet, but of course, Shakespearean sonnets are. He devised them because that's what he was good at. It took it really, that was the most frustrating, kept me awake at night one. And I, the last poem I wrote was about gender fluidity, which was just terrific fun. Mm. So, you know, that took me actually over three months to do those three poems. So, you know, I was fortunate that I had that work and You'll have to invite me back again next year to talk about my current commissions. Should we be looking forward to a, a truly wholesome collection of poetry to be oh. part? Would that be that would be very lovely, wouldn't it? Do you know what? I'd love to do it, but it's one of those things I'm really slack at. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I haven't really made made a sort of effort, and you know, not not everyone buys poetry books, and the thing about poetry books is that it can be quite a sort of snobby elitist thing and I'm sort of so I've been trying to sort of put all my stuff out online or check 
check out my website or Twitter, my Twitter accounts, please be my tweet hearts. Uh, so, you know, if someone were to come to me and, you know, we got on well, then I probably would do it. I mean, I've been in various anthologies, but, you know, this is what my assistant keeps saying, you know, you should, you should do this, you should do, but I haven't, you know. Okay, okay. <laughs> But I think you may have a couple of um, poems there which you might read us live um, towards the end of this interview. Would, would you do that, um, Trudy, and introduce them to us? Yes, of course, yes. Oh. Okay, well, the, the first one is that when I got this post, people hadn't heard of it, of course, and they said, oh, gosh, haven't we got one? You know, so rather than explaining it over and over again, I decided I'd write a poem about it. So this poem is called Being LGBT Poet Laureate. Poetry is my lover. Politics is my wife. Pleasing them is the driving force that governs my job and my life. Though not an easy option, it's a privilege and a thrill. Pushing art to its limit to help change a law or a bill. Poetry has a resonance. It reaches out to us all, challenges, inspires and amuses. It holds us all in its thrall. Art can make a difference in the way we think and act, express the things we need to say, make equality and justice fact. Uh, so I wrote this poem quite a long time ago, and uh, I was stimulated to write it by hearing Frank Sinatra singing Let There Be Love. So the title of the poem is Let There Be Love. And actually, I think this pretty sums, well, sums me up and, you know, where I'm coming from, and uh, which is hoping to really encourage and inspire us to, to do great things in whatever way. Let us have faith that we do all have choices, that what we do can make a difference, that there is goodness in all of us. Let us have courage to say no when we need to, to resist manipulation, coercion or force, to stand up to hate and evil. Let us have love in our relationships with friends and family, in the places we work, walk and study, in our hearts and in our minds. Most of all, let us have love. Trudy, that was the most brilliant way of um, finishing this interview. And I'd like to thank you for your, um, your words, your performance, um, but also your kind of fighting spirit and your, your sense of justice. All of this has come through so strongly um, um, in this um, 45 minutes or hour we've been talking. Um, it's been a complete um, privilege to, um, to speak to you um, on this occasion. And I do hope that we get the chance to perhaps hear more of these poems in the future. Thank you so much for coming to the Leeds LGBT Plus um, Festival 2021. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, James. It's been re really lovely. And I do hope I'll be coming up there because, of course, I, I love the North of England. So invite me. <laughs>